Cloverdale, traffic less from 71608, entering extended right downwind, 32 Cloverdale. A little bit high, coming on down. You can see some pretty big fancy houses here in these hills. This is all that wildfire hazard areas. And then you see the wine country vineyards come right up into the hills, right down here off the valley floor. Land on a three-point full stall landing. See how it plays out. Secure it, right base three, two, Cloverdale. Winds are out of the north. Keep this downwind short. There's the uh, lumber yard. Yeah, winds look like down the runway. Wires below me. Birds above me. More birds. Not more birds. Two birds traffic, Cessna 492 to Gulf Silver Up, Santa Valley, maneuvering at 3000 feet, still for traffic. Gusty! Follow the wind with the stick on these breezy days. So now with the wind behind us, the elevator's down. It's helping pushing the tail down, prevent it from flipping up on you. Same thing with the ailerons. <clears throat> you got a crosswind coming this way when you're taxiing. Go ahead and go like that and get that aileron down so it keeps from flipping that wing up when you're taxiing. Just the opposite of when you're trying to take off the wind. Looks like there's some neat old airplanes here to check out. This is why I just love knocking around these old airports. You never know what you're going to find. Check out what I found in the hangar right over here. Stand by. you got to see this. I think that's an old Volmer Jensen there. And Fib. Look at this. This is amazing. This is Brian's 7 8 scale SE5A replica, scratch built experimental aircraft, scratch built from plans only. Brian, how many years? 20? I have 23 to build it to here. 23 years to build it to this point. Still not quite finished, but almost finished. Continental 85 horse engine. Single seat. Wooden fabric. Mostly spruce wood, right, Brian? Spruce and, and some maho no mahogany, spruce, right? Sitka spruce. Sitka spruce and uh, marine mahogany. Violet. And that's in the uh, fuselage in here? Yes. Even he, he spent a week building the dummy gun there. And if you've ever looked at a Bowers Flybaby or a Pete and Pole Air Camper, it's kind of similar construction. He moved the instrument panel back behind the wires here to avoid having to fight with the wires. He built all these hand bezels, small instruments. Is this the mahogany we're looking at in here, Brian? It is. Yeah. Yeah. There's a seat made from a lawn, lawn chair. <laughs> With lawn chair and, and clips, and brake, yeah, uh huh. Great clips. This was given to me by someone that pulled it out of the dumpster, so I installed that. Yeah. Guy by, came by the airport one day and said, I didn't even know him. He just stopped. He says, Hey, I got a gauge that I've been using for a paperweight on my bench. He says, I think I'll give it to you. 
So he, he went left, he came back, he gave me the gauge, and I says, well, if you're going to give it to me, I'm going to install it. So we, me and a total stranger put that gauge in that day. It was pretty fun. And which gauge was that, Brian? That's a G-meter. Oh, the G-meter. Oh, the yeah. G-meter, yeah. like I'm going to need that, you know. Yeah. Well, you can tell how good your landings are. <laughs> and check out, he's got the exhaust come all the way back, similar to the way the original design was. And he's putting some some gap strips here on the ailerons so much work to go into one of these he just come in after work and put a couple hours uh, in each evening like one what was it one rib per night yeah i blew one rib per night and then and i go on to something else to get these kind of curves uh well, maybe up here is a better example. To get these kind of curves, this is one eighth inch uh, Sitka spruce laminated using uh, not necessarily steam bent, but similar to steam bent framing, and then glued together in a lamination upwards of almost an inch thick in some points. Two steps to get in, there and there. Seven eight scale, great workmanship. Brian, you've never built an airplane before. No, I never have. But you've done a lot of other. I've been a carpenter since I was a child. Uh huh. And you were always working some sort of construction. Uh, mostly custom homes, yeah. My life, finished work, trim, cabinets, doors. Whatever you want is possible. Yeah. Did you ever think it would take you 23 years? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. There's some, you know, I didn't think it would take that long. These things are complicated. You know, I had a wife that, that helped, helped was supported me, and I supported her, so. It, it was more about building it, you know, than a time thing. Yeah. Yep. Taking this, the time. What I call this is the uh, example of everything that you know, all my mentors and teachers taught me. Yeah. That if you're listening, you can do something like this. So. And you got the gumption to stick it out. You he started with the uh, the plans and the material just for the tail feathers, got that done, and then tackled the wings next, and then the fuselage. He's got the uh, Cleveland wheels and brakes bungee landing gear and then uh honda wheels those metal rims are from a oh, 60s vintage honda and then you had to it's custom from, lace uh, three, honda dream 300 about in around mid 60s okay yeah and then it had the uh spokes laced up I had the spokes made yeah and then with the continental c85 and the cents inch wooden prop uh no electrical system just Hand start it like the original. Just amazing workmanship. What one guy can do in his garage with enough time and enough patience. Two tone paint job, you see that light color here and then the dark green, the OD green on the top. You got your rondels down there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Just like the real deal. Got a piece of tape under there. Yeah, I just finished. Ready for a cleanup. Yep. Uh, Say that again, Brian. It was what book that got your attention on World War One stuff? Uh, Quentin Reynolds. They fought for the sky. And then you were in Arizona, and you went to the which museum was that? Champlin Fighter Museum. And what'd you see there? The I saw uh, a Sopwith pup and German planes and other wood metal fabric type planes. And that's what got you inspired. That's what got me going and tried to do this? Huh. And these are the these are the plans, that, the blueprints that you have to work with. This is all you got. There's no manual. There's no kit. The only two pieces you could buy for this aircraft was the fiberglass nose bowl and the tail wheel, and the rest you had to make yourself. Yeah. 
the bell cranks and the wing. That was another real hard. Yep, the controls, you got to weld all that up. Get this, all these parts this together. This part alone would make someone stop, I think. Yeah, it would make this me stop. It's probably the hardest one on the whole huh. job. Yep. Because there's a right and a left of what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. This is this, and you're going to make the opposite one. So I had jigs and rods and threaded rod and... And I learned how to, how to make these tabs is you make a, a straight flat one and drill a hole through it and then you've already got the the thing on the metal. I mean, I come up with so many tricks on this stuff. Yeah, you had to learn all the first time yourself. And this table, this table here is what you used for your jig for the fuselage. Uh, you take the datum line center top of the fuselage, which is straight, and build it upside down on that table there. And then he's got to have a lot of jigs for all the different curved pieces in the uh, w in the wing and tail feathers half axle or inch and a quarter axle and you got a wide enough hub here to handle a bit of a side load in that design. Yeah, so all this stuff here with the backing plate and the brakes everything from here I did myself with, with that that's uh, set up the there pushings and stuff yep and, yep Just amazing work. Thanks for sharing this with us today, Brian. This is just an amazing treat. Yeah. <laughs>